today is a member's business debate on motion number 10546 in the name of Gordon MacDonald on Dad's Rock International. What's on for Junior Award winner 2014? Gosh. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. I'd invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. And Mr MacDonald, if you are ready, uh, if you'd like to open the debate, please, you have seven minutes or thereby. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Before I begin, can I welcome to the gallery those members of Dad's Rock and the group of dads who have come along this evening for this debate. I also have to declare an interest as I am an unpaid trustee of this charity. Dad Rock was formed in 2012 in my constituency and before we recognise the achievement of this small charity, we need to understand why it was necessary for its starting in the first place. In Scotland, more and more fathers are sharing or fulfilling the primary care role, resulting in a groundswell in recognition of the importance of working with dads to allow them to spend more time with their kids. The organisation Working Families said, fathers want to spend more time with their children and are doing more of the direct care for them. Research suggests that this desire for more time with their family is widespread, with 82% of full-time working men saying they would like this. The Fatherhood Institute said a substantial number of fathers are now full or part-time home dads, with 21% of fathers of children under five solely responsible for childcare at some point during the working week, and 43% of fathers of school-aged children providing care before or after school. In a recent study by the Equality and Human Rights Commission found that 60% of parents said fathers should spend more time with their children the research shows that higher direct involvement from dads leads to a more positive outcome for our children. That's just some of the background to why Dad's Rock was founded by two Edinburgh fathers who came together wanting to start something to help others and have fun with their kids at the same time. There was no equivalent service in Edinburgh offered by the local council for fathers. Dad's Rock was started to fill that gap and is now the only free weekend service that makes space for all sorts of dads, granddads and male carers to come and play with their children and develop a network of support from other fathers. The, fa the founders had a good understanding of what dads wanted, being dads themselves, and they came up with a winning combination, a free musical playgroup feeding into many people's love of music, allowing dads to know that this common bond would make it an inviting place to come without judgment or pressure. Over time, the Dad's Rock team found that dads wanted more outings with their children, so they have increased the number of free outings, giving dads the confidence to discover new places, such as the National Galleries or a city centre farm, in a relaxed way to have fun with their kids and speak to other dads. Dad's Rock has now been going for two years, it's amazing to see the need for such an organisation grow and they have recently been able to launch a Glasgow playgroup to enable them to support more families. They are working in partnership with the award-winning Peak Project in Glasgow who provide vital street play for children. Dad's Rock have also built formal and informal relationships with a wide variety of organisations such as Fife Gingerbread, local midwifery and social work teams, Pilton Community Health Project, One Parent Family Support, Stepping Stones Edinburgh, the Broomhouse Centre, the Violence Reduction Unit and Whale Arts, to name but a few. They have also reached out to local schools and nurseries, have had referrals from several social work teams and working with local health agencies to deliver specific messages on male health. The feedback from all this activity clearly indicates that their service has had a positive impact on parents from both a resilient point of view, improving attachments between children and parents and expanding their social circle to allow new friendships and relationships to develop. Dad's Rock is about promoting positive images of fathers and highlighting that dads want to be seen as being just as vital to their children's upbringing. In order to get that message across, they have built relationships with local councillors MSPs and the Scottish Government. 
and their influence is such that even the Minister for Children and Young People herself opened one of their playgroups. Dads Rock has become advocates for dads and families and helped them to have a voice at local and national level. They now sit on the Scottish Government's Father's Advisory Panel as well as the, their Young Father Panel and the Edinburgh Council Play Forum. Through their success, they have become advocates for others to refer to. For example, the Scottish Government, the Scottish Book Trust and the MSPs have all approached Dads Rock asking for assistance in engaging with dads. This level of engagement and development of the charity resulted in 2013 winning, with them winning one of their first awards when families voted for Dads Rock to win a local parenting magazine award called the Parents' Choice Award. Then in June of this year, the Dads Rock team were nominated for two national awards organised by What's On for Little Ones. These were the, four, the most outstanding toddler group and one for the most outstanding volunteer. Over 90,000 votes were cast for all the nominees and Dads Rock were up against well-known national organisations. But despite this, they became the only Dads group through to the final and one of the few representing Scotland. One of their volunteers, Steve Leslie, had been nominated by local dads for the most outstanding volunteer. Every week he gave us time free of charge to set up the playgroup and pack everything away at the end of a hectic session, served on the board of Dads Rock, produced CDs of the Dads Rock members singing with their kids and generally helping out where necessary. The Dads Rock delegates attending the event were astounded to win in both categories and in true Dads Rock style, they led 150 strong attendees and a sing song of We Will Rock You. So congratulations to the Dads Rock team for all their hard work and thanks to the families who voted for them, but especially thanks to the dads and their children who have made Dads Rock the success that it is. Many thanks. I now call on Cara Hilton to be followed by Christian Allard. Um, can I begin by thanking Gordon MacDonald on securing this debate today. Hopefully it's going to be less controversial than our discussions earlier this afternoon. Um, I was delighted to hear that Dads Rock has won an award for the most outstanding baby and toddler group. It's hard to believe that Dads Rock was only established just two and a half years ago, yet already it's an international award winner. And it's great to see some of Dads Rock um, people here in the gallery today. Um, I'd like to extend my congratulations to all those involved in getting Dads Rock off the ground and ensuring its huge success as it expands its network of free musical playgroups across Scotland and more dads and more children have access to the Dads Rock experience. I first came across Dads Rock myself when they contacted me to help with their search for a playgroup venue in Dunfermline. Uh, the Dunfermline group started up in June 2013 and I persuaded my husband to go along with my two youngest children. I have to admit he was really reluctant to go along. I virtually had to push him through the door. But he must have enjoyed it because he's been going along ever since. And my four-year-old son delights in singing the Dad Rock signature tune, We Will Rock You, at the top of his voice all the time. The Dunfermline Group has since been facilitated by Dad's Rock Fife coordinator, Bruce Henderson, who's done a really fantastic job working with Dad's Rock Edinburgh and getting the group off the ground, reaching out to dads from all backgrounds and keeping the children entertained. Bruce has now moved on to facilitate Dad's Rock in Buckhaven and is working on launching a new group in Abbey View um, next month, hopefully. The dads who met at Dad's Rock Dunfermline have now started their own free playgroup, Dunfermline Dads, and like Dad's Rock, it's going from strength to strength. More dads are attending every week, and they've even started up their own five-a-side football team as well. For most mums, having a baby opens up a new social circle, from the buggy walks to baby massage, from playgroups to book bug sessions. There's lots of opportunities for mums to make new friends and meet other mums going through the same experiences. But as Gordon MacDonald has already highlighted, becoming a dad for the first time can often be difficult, especially for younger dads and those without family support and the increasing number of stay-at-home dads with primary care responsibilities. Many dads simply find the whole experience quite isolating, and that's where Dads Rock comes in. It's more than just a playgroup. It's a unique place where dads can speak to other dads about dad things, where dads can find invaluable peer support while playing with their children, where dads can be supported to be the best parents that they can be. In Fife, Fife Gingerbread has successfully used the Dad's Rock model to work with teenagers and more vulnerable parents and this work is especially beneficial in extending further support to dads out with the formal playgroup setting. 
It's more costly, but it does offer huge rewards, and it's absolutely vital that this work continues to be supported. Longer-term funding is absolutely crucial if new groups are to be developed and the Dads Rock models to be extended into more communities to reach more dads, granddads and male carers. Culture is also a challenge and the project workers I've spoken to on the ground tell me that in many of our communities dads can be a bit reluctant to come forward and when they do it takes them a wee while to get involved in the storytelling and especially in the singing. Reaching out to more vulnerable dads is especially challenging and this can particularly be the case where dads have had a difficult time when, when they were young or where other personal challenges make it difficult to develop secure bonds and relationships with their children. And that's why the partnership work is so vital in breaking this mould, encouraging positive interactions and relationships between dads and their children, giving dads the extra support they need and recognising that dads are central to the family equation and play a vital role in the upbringing of their children. The result is more creative play, better relationships and a better, happier future for both dad and child, both in the preschool years, when children start school and when children become parents themselves. So can I conclude by once again congratulating Dads Rock on their achievements so far. I hope that they continue their brilliant work in reaching out to more dads from all backgrounds across all our communities, helping to ensure that we really do get it right for every single child and helping in the goal that we all have across the Chamber of building a better and brighter future for children, dads and families right across Scotland. Thank you. Thank you very much. I now call on Christian Allard to be followed by Mary Scanlon. Thank you, President Officer, and I would like to thank Gordon MacDonald to bring this, uh, this debate to the Chamber today. It's very, very important that we celebrate uh, what fathers are today in the 21st century. And uh, I, I do know a bit of, bit of it, Dad's Rock, and one of the reasons I do know a little bit of Dad's Rock is because we came to our committee, to the Equal Opportunities Committee, when we had uh, an inquiry uh, on the fathers and, and parenting. And I was very pleased to be part of that inquiry and, and I did share some of uh, some my experiences with some people of Dal Rock, some of the members of Dal Rock. I've got to declare an interest as well. I was a single father for more than 10 years and this great support that groups like Dal Rock are providing now uh, for people like myself uh, who are uh, uh, single parents. And let's not forget there are uh, more than three million children living in a single parent household and 23% of them uh, have dependent children and around 8% of single parents, 136,000 are fathers. Uh, so I was not on my own and dad's uh, single fathers are definitely not on their own. But more than that, what so impressed me about Dad's Rock, and it's the reason I'm so delighted to celebrate it today, is that Dad's Rock is so much in advance compared to other groups. Uh, we did visit other groups, and I went to see one of the groups in Aberdeen, in the region I represent, who were maybe more focused on uh, parents, uh, fathers, who had some other problems than, than, than looking after their children. Uh, and what I recognize very much is that the approach that Dad Rock took, and particularly the name you choose, not only your t-shirts, which are, I think your t-shirts are fantastic and, and look great, but the name you took, uh, Dad Rock. And what I mean by this, I think, uh, and you said it yourself in, 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 in some of the uh, evidence you give us, it's the idea that dads in families are the rock, as perceived as a rock. But in fact, dads and I, can, I know that for myself. Fathers, just like mothers, have got time when they need supports. We are no more rocks than mothers are. And it's very, very important that we recognize in the 21st century, in this society in modern Scotland, that, young, uh, that fathers need uh, help as well and need as maximum support, and mothers do. And what I want to add by this is, uh, I want to say that uh, fathers, particularly fathers in today's society when genders is still very much uh, a stereotype. Uh, fathers not only need all that kind of support, but they need to come out of uh, the, the darkness. I mean by this, they are not visible. Uh, fathers are not seen as mothers. And it's very, very important that we change the attitudes of people around us. And dad rocks are doing a fantastic, and I, I refer again to the t-shirts. I think it's that visual effect, that effect of saying we are dads and we are proud to be fathers and we want to be seen just like mothers. And that vulnerability, which is important, is that we may be seen as rock in 
inside as, as a family, as a big part of the family. But that rock is fragile as well and needs as much help as possible. And this is a, 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 a fantastic idea. And this idea that we have more and more of this group uh, growing all across Scotland uh, makes me very, very proud uh, to... And, to, to be in this debate today and to celebrate the fact that we are fathers. I don't think we celebrate enough uh, the role of fathers today. We need to celebrate a lot more. Yeah, I do remember that at school, Mother's Day was always a special day, and somehow Father's Day was a lesser day. We need to address this. You know, we need to shout to the rooftop the contribution that fathers are, 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 are doing today. And, um, and as I said again, I'm delighted uh, to, to, to be here today and to speak about the role of father in society today. Uh, because believe me, just like mothers, fathers need support, all the support they can get. And uh, I, I recognize dad drugs that you are encouraging uh, fathers to be all that they can be. Thank you. Many thanks. Now call on Mary Scanlon, after which we'll move to the closing speech from the Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I would also like to thank Gordon MacDonald uh, for this debate and the dads uh, to their gallery today, T-shirts and all. Um, dads Rock deserves commendation uh, on their group award for the most outstanding baby and toddler group, as well as board member Steve Leslie's individual award, most outstanding community group volunteer for children or families. This is a very impressive haul, given that the awards celebrate the best of children's activities and classes from across the UK, Ireland and Australia, and we are decided, as Gordon MacDonald said, after a massive 90,000 votes were cast. Uh, Playgroups have a special and important role for early childhood uh, education. Uh, many provide a wider range of equipment and activities than some may have access to at home, such as sand, water play, arts and crafts, and of course the making and listening to music. And like many other groups, Dad's Rock is free, which allows the service to be accessed by many uh, families. And Dad's Rock is uh, able to provide this service free because of their own fundraising efforts. And uh, I'm pleased to say that even last Saturday, they raised £1,400 at their annual uh, fundraiser. And in addition to their Saturday play sessions, their Rock Academy, which allows children and dads to learn musical instruments together, demonstrates their understanding of the importance of parents interacting with their children's first learning experiences. And we've heard so much from the previous Chief Medical Officer about early attachment between parents and child and how beneficial that is. Attending a playgroup has multiple benefits for children, but also for parents. For children, the exposure to new experiences and the emphasis on learning through play encourages them to develop skills such as interacting confidently with other children, learning to explore the world around them and to problem solve. And for parents, these groups allow them to meet other parents, participate in their child's early education and a place to discuss concerns, experiences uh, and development. Parent-led playgroups play are invaluable in confirming the role parents have in their child's education. As others have said, Dad's Rock was founded by two fathers who understood the importance that playgroups have in supporting parents and allowing parents and children to learn together, but who were dismayed that there existed no groups run by dads for dads in Edinburgh. Well, as a representative from the Highlands and Islands, I have to say you're... Uh, far ahead of anything that's there. And I would like to think that maybe you could come up to Inverness and beyond and sort of, uh, you know, show how it's done. Because if there's a need here, there's a need in every part of Scotland. But their vision for a Scotland where dads are seen as being equally valuable and, valuable and vital is great. However, it must be said that it's disappointing that it's not always the case. And whilst it's for another debate, presiding officer, for another day, I hope that dads' access to their children following the separation of parents is something that can be looked at uh, more sympathetically in future than it is at the present. Uh, and there's, I can honestly say there's not a week passes that I hear from a dad somewhere in the Highlands and Islands, please can you do something to let me see my child? And of course, very rarely I can do anything. 
Uh, when Equal Opportunities Committee were taking evidence in March, there were several submissions. Uh, one particular, Alan Reddick, a dad of two, spoke about taking his daughter to activities, including dance classes. And he commented, well, nobody speaks to the only dad in the room. Dads feel out of place. And I think that I shouldn't be here. This isn't for me. And then they had Dr. Clapton, uh, Gary Clapton of Edinburgh University, uh, submitted his research talking of the positively involved fathering is incontestable and proven. Uh, so, in summing up, uh, I would like to say, uh, Presiding Officer, I speak from personal experience, as Christian Ballard did, when I say how much children need fathers and how difficult and often impossible it is for a single mum to fill that gap. So Dad's Rock deserves praise for their commitment to learning through play and parent-child interaction and the support they provide for fathers. So thank you to Gordon MacDonald and I wish that Dad's will rock all through Scotland and not just in Edinburgh. Thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> and I now call on the Minister, Aileen Campbell, to make the closing speech on behalf of the Government, please. Okay. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I'll also start by thanking <clears throat> excuse me, Gordon MacDonald for bringing this debate to the Chamber. And thanks also to those members who have stayed here to show their support for Dad's Rock. And it's also nice to be able to welcome again Dad's Rock to the Parliament. And I've been really personally delighted to hear of their success. And I'd like to add my own congratulations to them in winning these internationally recognised awards. Now, Thomas and David, who created Dad's Rock, as Gordon MacDonald outlined, back in 2011 because they strongly believed then, as they do now, that dads can and do play a vital role in the upbringing of their children. And I wholeheartedly support that belief. And I know that most dads want to be fully involved in their children's lives from day one. But I also know that at times, some organisations in some sectors, including schools, GPs, playgroups, and parent and toddler groups can unintentionally make dads feel unwelcome or excluded. And as I'm sure Dad Rock would advocate, it's time that this changed. And we can all see more and more dads taking a principal role when it comes to raising their wee ones, often supported by organisations like Dad's Rock. Indeed, my own personal experience reflects that, given that I'm lucky enough to have such unwavering support from my own husband when it comes to caring for and raising our wee boy, Angus. And no doubt when the next one comes along, because I can confirm this bump is a baby and not the result of a poor campaign diet. <laughs> But we know instinctively that fathers can and do play an extremely important role in their children's upbringing. We need to do all that we can to support and encourage their involvement right from the very start, from pregnancy to birth through the early years and beyond. And indeed, when I was at a Sense Scotland conference uh, earlier this year, one of the most uh, beautiful things I heard was how a father's voice can um, get through to the womb much more easily because of the deep bassy tones. And that was a lovely way in which a father can have a real involvement uh, during their partner's pregnancy. So I think we need to make sure that we do everything we can to involve uh, uh, particularly dads from the start of pregnancy and, and, and into the child's upbringing. And yet during our wide ranging consultations with fathers and professionals right across Scotland during the development of our national parenting strategy, we heard how many fathers didn't feel engaged, valued or encouraged to be active and involved parents. What an absolute waste that is. But as a result of what we heard during that consultation, the parenting strategy that we launched in October uh, 2012 recognises that fathers should undeniably be closely involved in their children's lives at every single stage. And as we continue to move forward with implementation of the strategy, we're working with a number of our partners to look at how we can make services relevant and better able to involve fathers more positively in the upbringing of their children. We're looking at how the strategy fits for fathers and what we really need to do to listen effectively and respond positively to what dads really want and need. And I know that that's of particular interest uh, to Christian Allard, given his own personal interest, but also because of the work that he uh, carried out on the Equal Opportunities Committee. And through that work, we plan to continue to ensure services such as health, education and the third sector make dads feel welcome and included. For example, we're currently working alongside children in Scotland to look at ways in which our public bodies can ensure more equal treatment of dads when it comes to parenting responsibilities. And we're funding organisations like Fathers Network Scotland to deliver practical support to people 
and organisations at the front line who work every day with fathers and families in Scotland. And working closely with Fathers Network Scotland, we co-chair the Father, National Fathers Advisory Panel, which meets throughout the year to consider how fathers can contribute to policy and practice development right across government. And we're constantly looking at how we can better engage dads. And most recently, members of the panel have been helping us to restyle our Play Talk Read and Family Information Service websites to ensure they work in a way that speaks directly to dads. Now, that work is all very positive, and there are many people and organisations working really hard to meet the changing needs of families and fathers in Scotland. But we do need to go further. We all need to think more broadly about how we portray fathers and how we can improve our interactions with them. How we celebrate them, I think, as uh, Christian talked about in his uh, speech. Positive messaging about fathers is critical in that process. The media, marketing, social norms, public attitudes and public services all have a role to play. And as, Gor as Gordon, Mary and Christian have all said, good relationships and positive social networks are equally as important for fathers as they are for mothers. And indeed, we just, I just heard today of a dad who has set up a new dad and toddler group in Barhead, supported by the Early Years Collaborative in East Renfrewshire, because he really wanted to provide an opportunity for local dads there and their children to meet up, to socialise, to make new pals and to support one another. And I think Cara Hilton spoke of potential projects in Fife, and who knows, perhaps the Highlands will be the next step on the map, as, as Mary uh, uh, Scanlon hoped that it would be in her speech. Now, we need to see more initiatives like this supporting Scotland's fathers and their children, and we'll continue to work with members of the Fathers Advisory Panel, including Dads Rock and Fathers Network Scotland, over the next few months to map the delivery of support groups for dads right across the country. And this will mean that we will better understand the provision and consider what else needs to be done to fill the gaps, to encourage participation and to widen access. But tonight is, though, about us uh, congratulating and celebrating Dads Rock on winning the most outstanding baby and toddler group category at the International Watson Four Junior Awards. And this is a really great and much deserved achievement for such a young charity. I think the point that Cara made in just the two short years to be able to have these achievements is quite incredible. But now in their eighth year, the awards celebrate the best activities, the best classes and party providers from all over the UK as nominated and voted for by some 90,000 parents and carers. And congratulations also goes to Steve Leslie for winning the most outstanding community group volunteer for children and young families. What a complete inspiration Steve is for us all. So I think, you know, across the parliament, we want to say to Stephen, well done uh, and very well done indeed. Now, I've, as Gordon noted, have had the pleasure of visiting Dad's Rock and was fortunate to attend the opening of their granting project. And I was also really struck by their sense of fun and their dedication to promoting positive images of fatherhood. It was set up by dads for dads, as others have said. Their playgroup are, are positive, enjoyable and rocking places to be on a Saturday morning. And like Cara Hel H uh, Hilton, my husband, my wee boy, enjoyed themselves when they came with me to visit the, the project in Granton. And I'm glad, and I so, was relieved, I don't know if Cara had a chance to sing We Will Rock You, but I was glad that the boisterous singing out droned out my poor attempts at joining in with the singing as well. But it certainly was incredibly fun, and my husband and wee boy loved their time there, albeit just a short time on a Saturday morning. Dad's Rock also have taken part in the second learning session of the Early Years Collaborative in the SECC in May of last year. And that was a memorable occasion, not least because they had 800 people on their feet singing, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. But there was also a serious side to their participation as they shared how they uniquely in Scotland bring fathers and children together for fun, for music, for messiness, but most importantly for bonding and attachment as well. But don't just take my word for it. Feedback from the dads themselves is much more worthy of mention when they've said, Saturday mornings are always about dad's rock. Saturday mornings are about, now about daddy and daughter day. And I look forward to Saturday so I can catch up with the other dads and I can feel comfortable speaking about dad and male issues with others. And when asked to sum up dad's rock in a few words, dad said, a one-off, there is nothing else like it. It's unique, good laugh, good guys, great kids. And of course, somebody else said it was simply rocking. So in closing, presiding officer, I would like to thank Gordon MacDonald once again and the others who have contributed to tonight's debate. 
But I would also like to warmly thank Thomas, Dave, David, Steve and the rest of the team at Dad's Rock for their continued and instincting commitment to Scotland's children and their fathers. And I wish them every success for the future. So thank you, President Officer. Thank you and congratulations.